What is going on everyone and welcome back to Black Desert. My name is John and what we're going to be talking about today is a recap of the Festa or the Heidel Ball that happened the other day. So when the announcement was going on live, it was three in the morning Eastern time because they scheduled it on Korea time. But that's okay. I wanted to talk about just basically all the things that I thought were interesting and I guess things that more players would be uh, interested in. So as a recap, on July 26th, the Land of the Morning Light comes out on console, which I think is pretty cool. And I actually talked to some console players and apparently they don't have the Eternal Winter region yet and they're getting Morning Light first. That's kind of interesting, but uh, yeah, I, I thought it was really good. I wish the cutscenes were skippable if you guys have watched my playthrough, but that's just like a minor inconvenience. But um. Yeah, I'm glad the console players are getting it this month, and yeah, what's next? So, as we all know, we have an event going on um, soon. So for all of you who have gotten the Rocking Horse event, basically they're giving everyone a free Tier 9 horse, and if you don't need a Tier 9, you can get those Mythical Sensor thingies, which is, allows you to um, go for a Tier 10 horses. And they also announced at the same time the Tier 10 Doom Horse, uh, which is I thought was pretty unique. And so I think that before everyone freaks out, as far as I understand, like it's either going to be everyone can pick a Tier 9 horse of their choice. And it, unfortunately, it's untradeable, which actually, no, not unfortunately. I think that's a good thing. So for all the newer players out there, um, if you need a tier 9 horse, here's my recommendations. Uh, there's Ardenaut, Unicorn, and the Doom Horse. If you are a newer player, or just generally, I would recommend the Pegasus to Ardenaut to most people. It's because it allows you to get from point A to B generally faster, and it allows you to fly off mountains, which, when I first started, uh, BDO, or when the Dream Horses tier 9s came out, there were only two choices, the Pegasus or the Unicorn. And fun fact, I actually wanted the Unicorn first because back in the day, grinding Aukman and Histria was considered the meta and like that's where all the like good players grinded. And so that's where I was. I wanted the Unicorn first, uh, but I got a Pegasus. And honestly, like over time, I've gotten used to it and I really liked it just because it allows me to just take a lot of shortcuts in uh, traveling. So that was just my recommendation for all of you new players out there. And um, it's untradeable in the market, but honestly, I think it's fine. And realistically, I kind of wish they just gave everyone tier 8 coursers. Because honestly, nowadays, I just want a tier 8 courser so I can use it on my seasonal characters. Obviously, a tier 9 is better, but you can't use it on seasons. I wish you could because like they allow you to use cron stones on seasons. But they don't allow you to use dream horses. That's so wild to me. But um, yeah, with the announcement of that, uh, you get to pick your free, free tier 9. I believe that's how it works. Or And then the tier 10 Doom is coming out in the near future. Um, I thought that was cool. So, of course, with the new announcement, they're probably going to announce uh, new bosses for the boss blitz in the new region. They're going to announce uh, grind spots. So, yeah, we just heard that that's coming out soon, which is awesome. Could always use a change of pace grinding in different areas. And I've honestly, for the past like six months, I've been grinding the three same rotations of Histria, Hex, and I think like, I don't know. Those are the two main. And then I just have like random other third. So uh, they had a trailer for the new boss splits. It's like a dragon thing. So if you ever played... The best way to describe it is if you've ever played Final Fantasy XIV, that one trial, the Susano one, it's kind of like that, except or the dragon one where it's in the water and you just kind of stand on a platform in the middle. Uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's fine. It's just like you stand in the middle of Dragon Boss, go around in water, and you do something. And then, as you know, with the Festa, they have new login rewards, so we get to have another... Uh, 15 of these. I believe this is actually... Someone said it was like a 300 fail stack from the Origins. Like, I think they're increasing it or something. But I just heard 
Origins, and then 300 fail stacks. So if I put t those two together, they're probably increasing it. Right now, it's like 230, and I think they're just raising it uh, hard cap. I believe that's how it works. But either way, we get Origins, and then you get to make another two, 230 stack, plus the Valks and everything. So that's always good. Um, One of the biggest announcements they made yesterday, or not yesterday, whenever the event was going on, was that infinite pots are actually going to be sellable and that actually surprised me so the reasoning was that uh infinite pots are easier to get well it is easier to get nowadays than before but being able to uh just sell it on the market is wild to me like i always thought these were considered rare items and, and like unique ones but i guess they don't put it on the same level as like need versus nice to have like for example the compass the archaeologist map the rich merchant ring these are all very nice to have but the infinite potions as the years go on and they keep introducing like higher end spots i think infinite potions are becoming more mandatory or at least the health potion is anyway but i i don't know if they announced that you can put it in your family inventory but i know you can sell them coming soon and so that's interesting. I wonder how much it'll cost. Obviously, it's always going to be max price. So if you don't have yours, then I guess you can buy it now. Who knows what it'll be? So fun fact is back in the day, I always talked about how much I would pay for infinite potion pieces when I was grinding mine. And I just felt like it was just like I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I actually said that I would pay about like 10 bill per piece for the infinite health potions or I guess just infinite potion pieces in general. So I would say if they were to sell it on the, or if they were to price it on the market, I would value an infinite potion piece at around like 50 billion total just because of the amount of like time it takes to get it on average. But um, also if we use like actual facts and stuff, the way this works is, you know how uh, you can get the weekly quest, right? And then you need about 100 of each piece to get, like, one infinite piece of everything, right? So if it takes 20 weeks at the very worst, and you have to do this three times, especially for the health one, which you can upgrade midway, I would value that at, like, 20 hours of grinding and times three and let's say the average person makes like 500 mil an hour obviously that different but yeah that's about like 10 bill to guarantee it just doing that one hour of grind at every spot so it's like 10 bill a piece so obviously like things there are a lot of factors in it but i would just value it at 10 bill a piece times three so like 30 billion for the entire thing but that's just my recommendation. I think they're just going to have some weird arbitrary number that they made up and that makes zero sense. But I think that people will sell them. It's just that they're probably going to add some weird price. It's going to be like, oh, you can sell an infinite potion for 10 bill. And then people are just going to be like, is it worth it? I guess so. I don't know. Either way, like over the time, because... Um, over the time that we had it, I had my two potions, and then I actually act made two different. Oh my god, where are they? Yeah, so like I have actually two different sets for both the health one and the mana one. So, I don't know. Will I sell it? Maybe. There's a possibility, depending on the price. That's cool. But yeah, I always thought that these are supposed to be unique items that you would have to get yourself even though there's like a guaranteed light at the end of the tunnel now but it is what it is and next thing they added which i thought was interesting was a 300 versus 300 pvp and as we all know siege is not great right now even if that is like 100 versus 100 versus 100 but then they're adding like 600 person pvp which i'm definitely gonna try it when that happens but I expect, like, the thing to be running at, like, 5 FPS when there's, like, everyone fighting in one area and I'm just going to get disconnected and throw out one ability. It's going to do no damage and then I crash. But hopefully, um, 
they actually take some proper measures for this like the way i think it should work is like you know how on node wars and sieges it happens on the first channel of everything they should have a dedicated channel exclusively for like when pvp happens and it's like a separate from all this one and then like people for example who aren't participating in war can't even access the channel while it's going on that might be like a big thing so you know how if you go into the lvo realm right now all the npcs are basically gone right they should do that for large wars that way it there's less things to render and load on the screen so and then have it a separate channel and a separate like area overall that might help but i'm pretty sure like when 600 people on the screen throwing out abilities and everything if you're playing on like anything that's higher than low settings it just might not work but who knows and maybe i would love to be surprised by how they optimize it and yeah who knows it might be interesting and then they announced the Megu Awakening, and I don't actually, I don't remember when the release date is, if there is one, but they kind of just teased it a little bit. So, yeah, Megu Awakening. We've been waiting many months for it. Hopefully it's pretty good. Everyone knows that Wusa got Awakening also like, what was it, four or five months later? And then, so Megu is probably right around the corner, and hopefully it's good. Um, Megu's getting nerfed, and, well, it did get nerfed recently, and so I hope they make the Awakening somewhat competitive, and they're gonna be doing a lot of boss changes and balance changes for variety classes, and adding new bosses, which I think are pretty cool. They're also adding new or revamping some nodes or all the nodes and workers system, so anyone who actually follows this pretty carefully i think a lot of all the nodes and everything are going to be changed in the future which i think was i think overall it's time for a rework for the node system one thing that one i'm going to be talking about in another video when we get to it is you know how these workers happen like at they go to level 40 now um and you at level 40 you can select them and put their drop-off point to a certain storage so like let's say you have someone working in like x place you could have their item drop off or materials be in a certain town which is something i think is really good and then they're going to be adding or just removing the level limit on pets so like you know how it takes uh, level 10 i believe they're just removing that part there's still going to be tiers but they're just going to remove the time it takes which I think it's overall a good thing because, like, let's say you're a new player and then you get a new pet, right? The It's cool, but you still have to take the time to get it to level 10 and everything. And so I think that's kind of the annoying part because you have to leave it on agile and then just feed it every few hours just so it levels up. But yeah, I think it's an overall good thing that they're removing the level system for pets, but there'll be like tiers that like the way it works now, like tier four or five and all that stuff. I think that's fine, but just the fact that you can use your pet effectively at tier one or like level one, I guess is a good thing. So speaking of pets, as you guys know, the Festa coin event is going on and I made a separate video. I'll leave it in the description of what I would think are priority items to get. Now in the end, I would recommend getting all the one quest per family ones and then Obviously, just getting everything you can throughout the event. But there's one where you can get a fantastic dragon surprise. And basically, it's this item right here. Uh, basically, it's a random box where you get like a tier 1 to tier 4. Chances are you're going to get a tier 1 realistically. But um, definitely something to look into. And you know what? Actually, let's open this box right now here in live. Um, I don't need pets in this game. I've had mine for quite a while, but... It's not the, unfortunately, it's not the, uh, dragon pet that you get from Garmoth, right? That gives HP. It's just a random standard one that you get off the cash shop. I mean, if a pet is a pet. If you're not min-maxing your pets, it's fine. I don't, I wouldn't recommend most people to min-max because that's a huge money sink. So, 
overall, I guess I would just say getting a free pet is good. Let's open it. Let's open this at 22. Got a tier two pet. Let's see. So it gives combat XP. That's a, that's pretty good, I think. And followed by gathering. That's not bad, actually. That's a pretty good roll. Like the one by default, I believe everyone gets combat XP, which is always good. The way combat XP works in this game is not what you may imagine. So as you guys know, there's like percentages, right? Now, the way it works is it's additive, not multiplicative. So like, let's say you are using your 530% scroll, right? And then you stack it with a 200%. That means it's 730. And then when you get to 5% extra from the pet, that's an extra like 4 or 5%. It's not a lot, but... <laughs> Just want you to know it's not like you're getting 10,000% XP or something. It's just additive. So 5% really you aren't going to see a difference. But either way, it's nice to have. And it's a free pet. So just take it. And um, yeah, there's a few more other things that they announced, I believe, for console. But um, I think that's realistically the things that matter to most people, I guess, in like the current stage more for like the mid tier to end game players. I think those are all the highlights. The ones that really shocked me were just the infinite potions being sellable and the free tier nine that's coming out. And um, I guess people are going to have mixed opinions on the whole thing just because it's like, oh, I get both sides of the story. Trust me when I say it. I understand that people work very hard to get their infinite potions or their dream horses. But at the end of the day, I am all up for catch-up mechanics in this game because the worst thing that can happen is the game dies and your gear and progression means nothing. So I think that giving people some like catch-up mechanics are good. And um, I, I think instead of a free tier 9 that people get to pick, it would just give you a box and then you spin it randomly and you get whatever it gives you. Like getting a free tier 9 in general, even if it's unsellable, that's a very huge gain, and I think it should just give you one randomly. That way, I mean, it's like, if you get the wrong one, it is what it is, but the game likes RNG, so it should give you a random one instead of having to pick it. That would just make it more exciting that way. It, here's how I see it. 99% of players, you're going to pick the Pegasus, the Ardenaut, and then the 1% of the rest of us who already have everything, chances are... Uh, you're probably going to pick the, either the Doom or Unicorn just because you do very specific things. But I would say the most majority of players, the Pegasus is the way to go. And um, yeah, let's see how the infinite potions are going to be sold on the in, on the market. I hopefully think that they... I hope they make the right decision and make them valued pretty highly. Um, so the point where people will actually sell them, right? And, uh, yeah, it's, I'm curious to see how that's going to work out. Like, are you able to sell the individual pieces or the full potion entirely? And, um, who knows? But anyway, that's about it. That's the recap that I thought was interesting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys stick around as well. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you come back and see you guys later.